Hello, what are you reading? Hi, it's the Holy Quran. But isn't the Quran only for Muslims? Not at all. Its teachings are addressed to all humanity, from heads of state to everyday people like us. What does it teach us? It's a book of life for life. No thinking person should pass through life without it. Where can I get a copy? From the IPCI, 124 Queen Street, Durban. يستبدل قوم غيركم ثم لا يكونوا أمثالكم صدق الله صدق الله المولانا زين. My dear children, I have read to you the last segment, the last quarter of the last verse of Surah Muhammad. Last segment, last quarter of the last verse of Surah Muhammad and where will you find this Surah in the Quran? You know the Holy Quran consists of 114 chapters. Are you going to start paging through looking for Muhammad, Muhammad in 114 chapters? What is the best way to get at Surah Muhammad? Index. The answer is index. If you have a volume like this Alhamdulillah, by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. At the back of it, there is a very comprehensive index. Open the index and look for Muhammad, as a Surah Muhammad, in italics. Every Surah is in italics. Muhammad, this is chapter 47. And 47 is easy to find because every page is numbered. Once you have found that, as is the last verse, verse 38. Chapter 47, verse 38. Allah bari ta'ala, He warns us. So, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُنْ وَمْثَالَكُمْ That if you, O Muslims, if you turn back from the duties and responsibilities which Allah has imposed upon you for being the khaira ummatin, the best of people, if you don't carry out your duties and responsibilities, Allah says, يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ he will substitute in your place another people. Summa la yakunum salakum. Then they won't be like you, rubbish. You think Allah has chosen you? You're going to sit on the pedestal because you are a Muslim. You don't do your job. It's a get out of the way, you bloody rubbish. Make way for somebody else. And this is his law. This is the unchanging law of God. You don't do your job. Get out of the way. That's what they do to your professors. Hmm? The rector. He's seeing whether the teachers are doing the job. If not, he replaces the guy. You have an imam, if you hired an imam, if he doesn't do his job, replace him. If you have a bangi, mazin, he doesn't do the job, replace him. This is the law. Your father's in your businesses. You have a manager, he doesn't do his job, replace him. This is the law. Same law of God. You don't do your job, displaced, replaced. And Allah bari ta'ala chose us. He says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrajit lin nas. You are the best of people evolved for mankind. Not for yourself. For mankind. You are the best of people evolved for mankind. Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna nil munkar. Because you enjoin what is right and you forbid what is wrong. Wa tu'minuna billah and you believe in Allah. If these are your qualifications, that you are enjoining people to do right and you're forbidding people from doing wrong and you believe in Allah, in that case, you are the best of people. Not because you are Arab, 
और है पठान और अफगान और है हिंदी मुसलमान और है पाकिस्तानी रबिश रबिश वट मेक्स यू खैर मत इन द बेस्ट ऑफ पीपल दीज आर योर ड्यूटीज एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज अल्लाह से दैट यू एंजॉय वट इज राइट एंड यू फोबिट वट इज रॉन्ग एंड यू बिलीव इन अल्लाह एंड वंस यू हैव एक्सेप्टेड दैट the very first duty and obligation that allah puts on you and me on every one who claims now to be the best of umma no honor without responsibility there's no honor without responsibility your rector he has his responsibilities hmm? your teacher has his responsibility everybody in a position of power has his responsibilities and you mean to say that we the umma the khaira ummat in the best of people no responsibility kha pi kar maza karo eat drink and make merry huh? live like animals no responsibility no allah imposes a duty and a responsibility upon us for being the khaira ummat and this honor this privilege that allah has given us is to be shared is not for keeping it is to be shared with who the very first people allah says with whom we must share a walau amana ahlul kitab lakana khairan lahum but if the people of the book who are the people of the book who come 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 man the jews and christians don't be shy say you're going to give better to the nasara and to the yahudi and to the mushriks and when you can't open your mouth in front of your uncle your grandfather ha huh? you're going to give better mujahid all all martyrs want to become martyrs no my son you know learn man to open your mouth hmm open your mouth speak up make a mistake nobody is going to kill you who are the ahlul kitab the jews and the christians so allah says ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خير لهم. But if the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, if they hearken to this message, it will be better for them. In other words, it will be better for you. من هم المؤمنون؟ Among them there are good people, Mu'mins. Very high title. Among the Jews and the Christians, Allah says there are Mu'min. و أكثرهم الفاسقون. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. The Jews and the Christians have been prepared to receive this message. They have had prophets after prophets sent to them. We take the names of these prophets as our own prophets. As I was telling you people yesterday, yesterday in that big hall, how many of you were there? Please put up your hands. Masha, Masha, Masha. No use brushing them aside. They have certain qualities. You see that yesterday, hmm? they came in the numbers according to the po campus population. The boys and the girls were there, and most of them they were not ashamed to hide their identity. They put on the skull caps. They're not terrified. They want to show you they are, we are Jews. They are proud of being Jews. They have certain qualities. that makes them that we say man they're controlling all the media they're controlling all the whole of america they're controlling all the economy of the world they deserve to control hmm they got us all 1 billion muslims at arms length keep away 1 billion muslims we can do nothing we can't see the hair look there's something about them admit it they have certain qualities they're not ashamed to hide their identity they are prepared to tell you that we are jew We are terrified to identify ourselves. You know that. As soon as you get out from here, you'll put your head away. Huh? What are you ashamed of? You want? You are ashamed to be recognized as a Muslim. No? You'll see. As soon as you go outside, Alhamdulillah. Look, so many of us we have it on, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. But as soon as you go out, hmm? am I correct? Am I correct? We are ashamed to identify ourselves that we are Muslims, good or bad. Whatever type we are, but we say we are Muslims. We are ashamed. So Allah chose the Jews. Out of the four books, seventy-five percent are Jewish books. Seventy-five percent. The Quran is the only Arab book. 
The other four, three are Jew, Jew, Jew. Allah chose them. Allah says, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati yallati anamtu alaykum. Say, O children of Israel, remember the special favors which I did unto you. Wa anni faddaltukum ala alameen, that I preferred you above all the peoples of the earth for my special favors. There's some qualities about the Jew. That perseverance, kicked out from Palestine for a thousand years, two thousand years, every Easter, they call it the Feast of the Passover, they were praying, next year, Jerusalem, next year, Jerusalem. Every feast of those ends with next year, Jerusalem. Two thousand years they kept at it. That perseverance, next year, Jerusalem, and they got it. And they got Jerusalem. There's some quality about them. Allah, He sees, He gives you according to your deserts. So Allah chose the Jews. But this was not a racial thing. The Jew because he's a Jew. No, 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 no. He was given this honor, this privilege of being the Khaira Ummatin for a certain job of work to deliver his message to mankind. The Jew made his religion a racial religion. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. Everybody else keep him out at arm's length. You go him, go him, Gentiles, you filthy, dirty, unclean people, uncircumcised, khabis loko, napak. Keep it. They made it a racial religion. So a Jew among the Jews, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, he's telling the Jews, and the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. You don't do your job? Same law. Yastabdil qawman ghayra. He'll substitute in your place another people. Same, same, Jesus is saying the same thing. And the kingdom of God, this honor, this privilege, this honor that we have got, they had. Allah says, so Jesus says, it will be taken away from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Those who are going to produce fruits. And this is also another law of God. That when he displaces a people, when he replaces you with somebody else, he always chooses a nation that are the most despicable in your sight. To make you sit on your head. He doesn't find the superior most. He will make the guy whom you are looking down upon. To make him to sit on your head. As a punishment. Like rubbing your nose in the sand. You don't do your job. Not only get out of the way. He says look. But I'll re replace you with somebody that you are looking down upon. The people who are the most despicable in your sight. Allah will make them to sit on your head. That's his law. So, the Jews were a chosen people. And Allah displaces them with the Arabs. The most despicable nation on earth. The Arab. You know what the Arab was? First is, he said his lineage, his ancestry, father Abraham, they say, had two wives, Sarah and Hajra. We are the children of Sarah through his heart, and these are the children of Hajra through Ismail, through Ismail, the Arabs. And they call the Arabs Hagarins. Hagarins. Hajra is all offspring. And they call Islam Hagarism. Not Islam, Hagarism. The religion of the children of, of Hajra. Hagarism. This is what they, So Allah Bari Ta'ala displaces them with the Arabs. People they're looking down upon. Hmm? The son of born women. This Ishmael was the son of a born woman, a slave woman. All right. So Allah chooses them. These Arabs, barbarians, animals in human form, of the Ayyamul Jahiliya, of the days of ignorance. Gibbon, the master historian, he describes the Arabs of the Ayyamul Jahiliya, of the days of ignorance. He said the human brute, this animal in human form, almost without sense, it's got no brains, is poorly distinguished from the rest of the animal creation. The only difference between him and the animal is the form, this form. Fi ahsani taqweem, Allah has made you in the best of forms, the shape, this comeliness, otherwise animal and worse than animals. These Arabs, they married their stepmothers. Do you know that? They buried their daughters alive. 
fratricidal wars, fighting over little, little things for decades, killing one another. Animals in human form, worse. And Allah transformed them, made them into torchbearers of light and learning through the Quran. And they spread out. And they went, and went as far as the Atlantic coast, went and conquered Spain, ruled Spain for 800 years. No Christian nation has ever ruled Muslims for that period of time. 800 years the Muslims ruled Spain. Do you know that? 800 years. And you go and see the, the monuments there. The Alhambra, Granada. Go and see there. That's the only thing that they have to show you besides bullfights and castanets. The women they use in that dancing. Kata, 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 kata. Besides that, the only thing that they have to show you in Spain are what the monuments our forefathers left. That's the only thing that's worth seeing in Spain. 800 years, had a jolly good time, the Muslims. They beget bastard children from the Spanish women. Didn't convert them. Ahl al-Kitab, Ahl al-Kitab, people of the book. <laughs> 800 years. And they are reading the Quran. And they understood the Quran, unlike us. We Hindi Muslims, or we African Muslims, or we new brothers in faith, we read the Quran, if at all, for sawab, for blessings, for music, beautiful recitation, we read it. Allah will give us sawabs, He'll give us blessings, inshallah. Not for understanding. Hardly any of us understand. Is that a fact? Hardly any of us. But the Arabs understood. The Arabs in Spain, they were reading and they knew the language. They, they kept to the language. They understood the Quran. And they're reading. Allah is warning them. So how many were the gardens and the fountains they left behind? And cornfields and monumental buildings. And wealth and the amenities of life in which they took so much delight. Hey, hey, maza, maza. They enjoyed themselves. Allah is describing the scenes. Kathalika. Wa aurasnaha kawman akhareen. Thus other people were made to inherit these things. Fama baqat alayhimu samau wal ardu. Wa ma kanu munzareen. And neither the heavens nor the earth shed a tear for them. Nor was respite given to them anymore. They're reading and they understand what they're reading. They're not like us parrots. They understood. But when they're reading, they are visualizing the Egyptians. They're thinking the bloody fool, the Egyptian. You know, Allah sent the Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Allah sent nine plagues, plagues after plagues, destroyed them, destroyed them, destroyed them, nine plagues. But the fools wouldn't listen. Huh? They talk about the pyramids. They talk about the Sphinx. They talk about those in Abu Simbel, you know, all the temples, the huge monuments. Unbelievable, unbelievable. When you go and visit those things, you can't imagine that these people 5,000 years ago, they built these monuments. The, the pyramid, this logistics of the pyramid, each block 50 ton. How do you get these 50 ton blocks together? Huh? Without your modern machineries, how did they do it? You can't imagine it. That you have these blocks side by side, you can't put a thin cardboard in between. Once the thing is set, put, is put, how do you get these two blocks together? And another one together. Come, come and think. You engineers who are studying engineering, how do you get them together? You just marvel, marvel. Allah is discussing so. The, the Muslims in Spain are laughing at the Egyptians, the bloody goats, the bloody fools. Firaun, he didn't heed the warning. Hmm? Allah destroyed them. <laughs> you see, Allah destroyed them. <laughs> the bloody fools don't know that they are in the firing line. They are in the firing line. But no, no, you laugh at the other fool. This is man. We do it all the time. You are in the firing line, you laugh at the other fool. Not that you are the bloody fool. You are in the firing line now. No, nobody sees that. You see the other fool. They are not prepared to propagate Islam to the, to the Spanish people. Why? <laughs> Pig eaters. Suvar khane wale, suvar khane wale. Pig eaters. Wine bibbers. Pittak log. <laughs> what can they understand about Islam? Your forefathers, you Arabs. 
They were worse than any Spanish community. Anyway, no Spanish fellow married his stepmothers. No Spanish Christian ever buried his daughters alive. Hmm? But no, you laugh at the other fool. Allah says, Fatarabbasu. You wait. You khabis, you wait. Hatta yati Allah bi amri until Allah's decision comes about for your destruction. And they waited for 800 years. Allah waited and they waited. Our brothers, they waited. Until they were kicked out to a man. There was not one guy left in that country to give the azan after 800 years. What a failure. If the white man is kicked out, man is going to leave behind 80% of the African Christians. You know that? In 300 years he did it. 80% of the people will be Christians. Say, Jesus Christ, to Jesus Christ, they're going to die. Hey. 80% will be Christians saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Right? We, after 800 years, not one guy left to give the azan. This is Allah's law. You don't do your job, it's yastab dil qawman ghayr. Baghdad, Samarkand, Bukhara, and the Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, a veritable fairy land. Those scenes you can only reproduce on films. No more in real life. On the borders with the Mongols, the barbarians. What about preaching to them? So what can they understand? Uh -huh, they can't understand. Your forefathers could. Allah says, Fatah Rabbasu. You wait. And they waited until destroyed. Whole thing destroyed. Baghdad, Samarkand, Bukhara, Shis, destroyed. Still coming nearer home, our motherland, India, Pakistan. We Muslims ruled India for a thousand years. After a thousand years of Muslim rule, eventually when partition takes place, the Muslim gets one quarter, the Hindu gets three quarter. Why? You didn't do the job. You had a jolly good time and you spent the price. The price that you are paying now is for that, that neglect. What about here? Are we any better? Are we any different? We can laugh at all the bloody fools. The fools in Spain, the fools in Iraq, modern Iraq, Baghdad, Samarkand, Bukhara, these bloody fools, the bloody fools, the Mughals in India. We are the clever guys. Huh? I'm saying that you and I, we are now in the firing line. You are in the firing line. You don't do your job. What's happening to our brothers in Bosnia? Worse. Wallah, worse. I don't know, somehow Allah has spared us. Wallah, He has spared us. With all this neglect of ours, He has spared us. So far, as if some special <laughs> protection is being given to us. Hmm? We are being treated like Allah's pets. Pets being looked after. Nobody is singeing your hair yet. But this is the law of God. Allah gives you opportunities. Here on this campus, He's given you opportunity. Hmm? You are getting education. You will be the future leaders of the Muslim Ummah. And I saw yesterday some scene. Yesterday. Alhamdulillah, the people that are here, more than 50% were there. But overall, the audience, 90% were our sisters and daughters. Do you know that? 90% of those people that were there, the Muslims, were women. I want to know what happens to our men. Maybe they all run away to around the mother's aprons, you know, trying to get protection. What? From the Jews. They had torn down your pamphlets, your, your posters. So terrified, she run away home in your mother's laps. What? Huh? 90%. I don't know if those of you were there, you'll bear witness, 90% were our daughters. 90%. I want to know what kind of men are we breeding. And you are a people who are prepared to give battle. You university students, you want to do jihad. You want to do jihad. You want to go and die for the Palestinian do in the Intifada. I had two of your types in Cape Town, from the University of Cape Town. I went there on a lecture tour with Dr. Finley, Paul Finley, and two young guys from the University of Cape Town, Muslims, Muslims. They came along, said, Mr. D. Dad, we want you to help us to get to Israel. I said, what do you want to do there? He said, we want to help in the Intifada. We want to help our brethren. I said, look, you see the Jews are too well organized. Man, as soon as you land there, you are under surveillance. They are watching you. Every move you make, whose house you visit, they are all, man, you are on record. They got you taped. 
I said, my sons, you got no chance. The Jews, man, will catch you out in, in double quick time. You got no chance to go and help your brothers in the, in the father. He said, look, look, he said, did that. Get us into Beirut and we will sneak in through there. They are prepared to die for the Muslim cause. You are also prepared to die for the Muslim cause. Huh? You organize a meeting, but 90% of our, our audience was girls. Girls, they are prepared to die. They are prepared to face the Jews. Not you. What? Castrated all? Emasculated? Castrated animals? On the university campuses, you want to fight and you want to give battle. So the young men, I'm telling them, I said, look, I have this book here. Arabs in Israel, Conflict or Conciliation. We are going to give them out at the meeting in Good Hope Center. I want you to go and give them out in the streets with a happy face. Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Go and give it to the people, man. You want to go and die? I don't want you to die. I want you to do this little exercise. You want to help the Arabs? You want to help the Palestinians here? It's a booklet that you can give to the people. You want to help? Don't go and kill yourself. Don't commit suicide. Go and give this. What's the answer? He said, we're going to ask our Amir and come back. <laughs> They're still coming back. Hypocrites, man, hypocrites, I'm telling you. Hypocrites. You prepare to die. But when some little sacrifice is asked of you, he says, come my son, go and give this to the people. And you can't do that. You can't give a pamphlet with a smiling face and you say you are prepared to die. Who are you bluffing? Who are you bluffing? Go and bless your fathers at home. Not Ahmad Didar. I can see through each and every one. Wallah. Look, I'm in the field for more than 40 years now. And I can see through when the guy is talking about going to and helping in the, in the father. I can see through you, you bloody hypocrite. Who are you bluffing? Huh? You just want some uh, maybe putting me to the test, testing me out. How much I love the Palestinians. So, my dear children, we are in the firing line. Wallah. And Allah has given you an opportunity on this campus that you can share, learn how to share, how to talk. <laughs> I know people are terrified of me. You, you, you guys, you Muslims are terrified of me. I came here two years ago and I offered my services. I said, look, I'm prepared to come every Friday. And I said, if I can afford, I'll give you people 10 rands each to come and listen to me. It took you guys two years to call me. And never again, what I'm telling you now, I say, you are all emasculated, castrated people. You just talk. You want to give battle, you want to give jihad to who? You can't talk to the Hindu, you can't talk to the Christian, you can't talk to the African, you can't talk to the white man, you can talk to nobody. You are all castrated, emasculated people. Unless you are armed, and I'm prepared to arm you. With knowledge, how to talk. Look, I've been talking for 40 years. And I have provoked the Christians. I have provoked the Hindus, I have provoked the Jews, but look, no Jew or Christian or Hindu has ever touched me. Maybe there's an invisible shield around me, there's nothing like that. So what is it? You are terrified of me, you don't want me to come and talk to you, to share with you my thoughts, and you want to go and give battle to the Nasara. Who are you bluffing? Who are you bluffing? My dear children, there is a cause is being worked out, a cause in how to give battle to the Nasara. Combat kit. How to give combat to the Bible thumpers, the hot gospelers, the guys who come and knock at your door, who want to send you to hell. How to talk to him. Only two hours. That's all of your life. Only two hours. And this will equip you with this Kung Fu. You know, this killer shot. How to give this knockout blow. So, it's a privilege that you people can have. But I don't know. I don't know what stuff you are made of. From what I saw yesterday, I was very disappointed. Wallah. 90% of our audience are our girls. They are prepared to, to, to bear the brunt of the Jewish you know, attack if there's anything at all. They are prepared to, 90%. What happens to my sons? It's an amazing, conspicuous by their absence. So pray for me, as I pray for you, may Allah make you the real Mujahids of Islam. At least with your tongue. You can't go into battle, forget the battle. Forget the AK-47s, you know. But learn to use your tongue, your intellect, 
and share the faith that the same thing that befell our brothers in Spain and in the Middle East and in India and what's happening in Bosnia may not happen to us. Uh, we like to watch food in couple of years. Yes, yes. Right. And uh, he got me with this argument, this topic about religion. Right. I was explaining to him that each Muslim is put on the world, in, in, in the dunya, to, and he's got to prove it. Right. right. And right. we test him in such a way, and eventually he's going to either make it or not. Right. Right. So he tells me, uh, God knows everything. Right. Now, why would he test you if he knows the results of that test? Yes. So he knows what the results are going to be. Right, right. He knows what, what your weakness are, what your strength are. Right. What right, right. So, why, why would he test you in the first place? Why doesn't he just immediately, right. when you're created, right. go to have a good classified life? He said, let's say you, sir, you are the rector of the university. Huh? Your son is the son of six. The PSC, PSC, what do you call it? You're still the aunt, PSC. Primary certificate examination, the standard six. Face down. Right. Yeah, JC. JC is still there. JC. A metric man. Your metric is still there. <laughs> this is your son, you know, is a standard seven, eight, and your son is brilliant. You know? He is fit to get a metric certificate. Can you give it to him? You know your son is will will will, will uh, pass with flying colours. You are a rector of the university. Can you give him a certificate? Without the exam? Why? He, he's got to prove to himself that he's done the job. This is now for your benefit, for our benefit, that you are going through the process and you pass the exam. Same thing for an example for others. See, there's no easy way. He's not taking a pill, swallowing a pill. God knows. So you know your destination in heaven. Before you were created, he could have put you in hell. I'll put you in heaven. Finish. What the hell are you doing here? You, know, you would have been in hell or heaven. He knows eventually where you will be. You deserve hell. So, before your birth, put you in hell, your roof in hell, and you in heaven. And I'm told there's no need for this earth at all. There's no need for anything. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. You see, the example, the example is that of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah says that this sacrificing his son was a test from Allah. And Allah knew, knew whether he's going to pass or he's going to fail. So why test the man? Same question. Why test the man? You know he will fail or not. What do you want to test me for? See, if you, Imran here, he knows me from when he was a little boy. If he needs 10 runs, he thinks if uncle is around, he can get it. If I got it, he says, uncle, yeah, can you lend me 10 runs? Take it myself. He wants 50 runs. He said, uncle, can I have you free run? Is he testing me? No. But if he's not sure whether, you know, I will help him or not, then he wants to try me out once in a while to see that whether uncle will, if I need it, if I need it, will he? So he says, uncle, I need 10 runs, or I need 50 runs. So he tested me out for the future. Then after a couple of days he returns it and says, thank you very much, uncle. But he was testing me. So Allah doesn't need that. He knows whether Ibrahim alayhi salam will fail or he will succeed. Then why put him to the test? Now in his case, you see, human sacrifice was prevalent in his environment. People used to sacrifice their own sons and their own daughters. And man can be programmed, as I was telling you just now. You can be programmed into anything. Do you know that? This is man, the most valuable thing you have, the Eskimo says. What is it? your wife. And when I visit you, damn it all, you want to put her out of the way. Huh? You want to give me tea, cakes, what does it cost? <laughs> but the most valuable thing you have? Your wife. Where are you putting her? Out of the way. So he said, look man, the most valuable thing I have is my wife. I'm offering it to you. Program. Brainwashed. He believes sincerely that, that the, 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 the greatest hospitality he can show to you is to offer his wife to you. It's programming. <laughs> You can be programmed into anything. Sati, the Indians, you know, where the women were immolating themselves on the funeral pyre of the husbands. Why? 
Everybody works you up this man. You love your husband? She said, yes, I love my husband. I said, I mean, your husband is gone. What the hell are you doing here? Maybe you got another bloke. He said, oh, no. He said, come on, prove, prove your, <laughs> prove your word. So the poor thing, she used to go and burn herself on the funeral fire. Brainwashing. Man can be brainwashed into anything. So the people were brainwashed into sacrificing, human sacrifice, your own son, man. The most valuable thing I have is my child. I'm prepared to sacrifice for God. Sincere, sincere, sincere. What greater sincerity is that? Can a person show? Your own child, your own son or daughter. No, no, programming, brainwashing. So the people were brainwashed. Human sacrifice was prevalent. So God would say, send a coin, hey, no more. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So he says, now enact a scene, a drama. So now, Abraham, go through this. Mm, mm, mm. One dream, again another dream. So, no, it can't be, this must be serious. So he says, now Allah wants, he said, so what do you say, my son? The son says, why, father, if, if Allah wants it this way, I'm prepared to submissive. And at the critical moment, Allah says, no. He needs no flesh. Not of a man or an animal. What he needs is your willingness. So there's a lesson to be learned that he wants you, your willingness, I'm prepared to sacrifice. This was a test. He passed the test. So as an object lesson for others, God needs no sacrifice, no blood, not of a lamb or of an innocent man or a guilty man, no blood. So this is for our, for our own spiritual uh, development. Yes. Uh, one day somebody asked me a question concerning Children. Now we are saying children from them. And they said that uh, the child born in the morning was married to the child born in the evening. So, isn't that called incest? So, how do you answer that question? Uh, if you are suggesting like that, it would be incest. But you see, incest, all the religious laws, Judaism, says, has laws against incest or you covering your father's nakedness, means your stepmother or her nakedness, all shh, very, very strong, taboo. Incest is a very uh, big crime compared to adultery. Adultery in the house of Islam is next to murder, adultery, next to murder, because the adulterer and the ad adulteress hundreds lashes in public, you know. So it's, it's next to murder. Or some say stoning, it's, it's next to murder in its consequences. Incest is worse. Adultery with somebody else's wife or daughter. Incest with your own mother, or with your sister, or with your daughter, or your daughter-in-law. That's incest. It's worse. So incest is bad. Very bad. But you see, if there's no law, there's no sin. Sin is a breach of the law. The Immorality Act for so many years. So many white people went to jail and somebody committed suicide, right? But Simon van der Stel and all those guys that came early, you know, they prohibited the Bushman woman, the Hottentot and the Bantu woman, then they get these three million colors. Huh? Can anybody be charged for under the Immorality Act? No. Why not? He says, no law, no sin. Sin is a breach of the law. So when the law is there, it's a right, you break the law, shh, from there on, you are committed. So if there was no law, so there's no sin. But you see, some of our learned men, they say, they say that Adam and Eve were the first human beings who reached that stage of receiving divine inspiration, instructions. Prior to that, even the Bible says that they were like innocent kids. They were grown up, mature people, but they were innocent. They didn't know they were naked. They were naked. They were walking around, hearing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the private parts, but they didn't know that. So as soon as they ate the fruit that was, they were told not to eat, that was supposed to be the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as soon as they ate, they realized that they were naked. But they were naked all the time, airing themselves. Huh? And they didn't know it. <laughs> they didn't know it. So now they became aware because the knowledge came in. So Adam and Eve were the first people that God can command, like your children. You know, they're running around naked, and you enjoy it. You know, they're, they're three years old, they're running around naked. They're swimming naked in the little pool, paddling pool. You're, 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 your son or your daughter, you're happy, man. You're happy. You're like, put on something. 
they are happy, let the children men enjoy themselves. Right. But after a certain age, hmm, put on your swimming costume or your pants or whatever it is. See, the law, according to the, the, the intellectual development of the child. So Adam and Eve were the first people to receive divine inspiration among humankind. But they were other people. They were other people. But they were in animal form. You know, a human being, very good looking and everything, but animal in the behavior. They behave like dogs and pigs. And it was no sin for them. Right? They just behave like animals. What the animals would do, they would do. Nothing wrong. Because they didn't have that concept of right and wrong. Now the Bible speaks about Cain killed Abel. Cain and Abel were two brothers. The only two. That's what the Bible says. The Quran also speaks. Cain killed Abel. Then the Bible says, it goes into details about things. It says, Cain went into a city and got a wife for himself. But there was only two brothers. How did he go to a city? And in the city he found a wife. That means the city must be thousands of people living there. Or at least hundreds. Where did they come from? So, the Bible speaks about sons of God and the daughters.